Then you've got places like Denver, Colorado, who did have a few incidences, just like Los Angeles or New York, Chicago, Miami, Seattle, Washington. They uh, instated a law back in 1989 banning the breed. Um, we've approached them, we meaning Pitbull advocates going all the way back to 1989 with statistical data, with uh, American temperament test results, with the uh, views of veterinaries, uh, veterinary doctors, professional trainers. No one in Denver is listening. So that, that, that leads someone no like me. Sense. I'm not a politician, but mm-hmm. you know, looking from the outside in, reading between the lines, there's a political agenda going on there. What kind of political agenda can you have? I'm not asleep at the wheel for public safety. Therefore, I'm going to get reelected next term <sighs> on my dog's backs. Wow. That's That's crazy. where the two boys came from. They're actually, Forrest is the very first uh, death row survivor from Denver. Kane is the second. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, Forrest was very, very high profile in the summer of 2008. Um, when people from all over the world were writing an email, sending faxes to the mayor's office. And they weren't uh, going to let him They weren't going to let him go. And thank God, President-elect Obama came to Denver on his presidential tour. Uh-huh. And the city of Denver wanted us to go away very, very quickly and quietly. So best friends up in Utah <laughs> stepped in, negotiated his release, and his terms were never to go back to the original owner and to leave the state of Colorado. Well, that's sad for the original owner. Was the original owner irresponsible? Or um, was there a story? No, he, he got out of his fence. He, he, he might have put up a better fence in his backyard, mm-hmm. but the dog was in excellent health, excellent uh, nature, very good demeanor. This was not an abused dog. This was not a fought dog. This was not a neglected dog. So the owner neglected to put up a, a, a sturdy enough fence. If that's his biggest offense... You know, yeah. some of us have done a lot worse than that. Oh, I walk my dog in the neighborhood, and I tell you, I can't walk 100 yards without one of my neighbor's dogs coming out of its yard and running up to us. Right. Right. And that is really scary sometimes, because you never know what's going to happen, especially when one dog's on a leash and another dog isn't. Right. One's socialized, one isn't. Exactly. One's gotten adequate exercise, one hasn't. Mm-hmm. So what I call it is setting the dog up for failure. Right. Either the dog's been tethered in the backyard, or it hasn't been spayed or neutered, or it's got a lousy diet, it's got medical needs, uh, it's never been socialized, it doesn't go out for exercise. There's all kinds of different things that come along with responsible ownership. You take even one of those things out and neglect it long enough, you're setting the dog up for a problem. That's right. And then... The dog gets out in public If it's a pit bull and it has a problem, then it's going to make all the headlines. It's going to make all the headlines. But sometimes, if it's a golden if, retriever, it won't. S- sometimes even when it's not a pit bull. It still comes across as a pit bull. Oh, and yeah. And we're actually, we're <laughs> actually, um, I've contacted Fox News across the street uh-huh. here a few times because we've contacted the individual municipal shelter and said, in fact, the dog that was on the 11 o'clock news last night, that was not a pit bull. No, it wasn't. It was a German shepherd. We call Fox back and say, you need to recant the story. Did they? And they come back the next night and say, We're, we apologize, we, the, the dog that was involved in the uh, report that we did last night was in fact not a pit bull. But it's almost too late because by that point, the everybody's been standing planted. around the water cooler saying, did you hear about that the pit bull The seed has attack? been planted, right. And then people walk on the other side of the street if they see you coming with a pit bull. The public stigma is, is beyond you, me, and, and the people across the street. It's just, it's huge. We are constantly avoided. By people just like that. So what can we do? Do you have a, a an organization that? I that work with actually several organizations, a lot of rescues. Uh, one of the strongest prevention organizations is an organization up in San Francisco, run by my friend Chris Crawford, and that's for Pit's sake. Okay. And her, she does rescue, but predominantly she's about prevention, and, and she's going back to the very, very root of the problem. That is, who is making bad dogs? Well, it's not the people in Bel Air or Laguna Beach. It's coming from the barrio. It's coming from the ghettos. And what she does is she uses really good role models to go, you don't have to get these dogs and fight them. You could do something else with your life instead. You don't have to be a gangbanger or a drug dealer. You could do something else with your life. And she brings these professional fighters in and go, he's got fame. He's got fortune. He lives a healthy lifestyle. He competes for a living. He's an athlete. A human can, fighter, not a, a dog a human, fighter. A human fighter, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And uh, so she's using positive role models like that. And she actually has these athletes come with her into schools mm-hmm. and talk to the kids so they can relate because she's Caucasian. 
she's middle aged. Why would you know a young Hispanic male in in Compton or in East Los Angeles want to listen to her? They bring someone that the kids can relate to. All of a sudden, they're listening. She's up in the Bay Area. She's got the city of San Jose in her back pocket. They love her. Now, what she has done also, and this is something that kind of goes unsaid, is when the space shuttle blew up back in the 1980s, mm-hmm. they called her and her dogs to come do search and rescue. Really? When there's a major fire, when there's a bomb threat, mm-hmm. FBI calls her. Wow. The city calls for this. You know, when when the uh, when the twin towers went down, they called her. And she has FEMA pit called bulls? her. She has three pit bulls, wow. and they are probably. Probably up in the in the in the in the top one percentile in the country for search and rescue dogs of any breed. That's amazing. Breed. You know, we have so much more to talk about, and these segments go by so fast. Any chance I could get you to come back again? Sure. <laughs> well, we are definitely going to stay in touch. But right now, we have to take a very quick break. But when we return, it'll be time for Pet Place news and events here on KGIL and the Pet Place Radio Show. 